NVIDIA, AMD, ATI, and 3DFX. At different points of time, all of these companies were titans of the graphics card industry. And half of you watching probably have no clue who those last two were because they went under before you were even born. Regardless, graphics card technology has a long history and I'm gonna try to dump all of it on you as fast as humanly possible. So let's go! Flashback to the 1960s, a time before graphics cards. Well, there were graphics cards, but they weren't an actual card. They were an entire computer. And these systems were mainly used for scientific research. So if you had a graphics card, if you can even call it that, you were literally using a NASA PC. Throughout the 60s and the 70s, advancements in computer technology resulted in the creation of microprocessors and integrated circuits. With processor technology shrunken down, it opened up a whole new world of possibilities for computers, especially when it came to visuals. Now flash forward to the 80s. I know, I know, we're doing a lot of flashing today. No. Not that type. The 80s saw the rise of consumer graphics cards, or video display cards as they were called back then. The most prominent example is the IBM MDA, which released in 1981. MDA standing for Monochrome Display Adapter, the MDA was really the first graphics card, but it only displayed text, so it's not quite as exciting as you may have been expecting. Either way, this was a big deal for computers back then to be able to do this. And shortly after, in the same year, IBM created created the Color Graphics Adapter, or CGA for short. This allowed for computers to show, you guessed it, colors. The 80s is a big decade for graphics cards and computer graphics in general. Video games were all 2D graphics, but if you look at how they improved in quality over the course of the decade, it's apparent how much the technology actually progressed. We went from video games being mainly giant arcade cabinets at the beginning of the 80s, to having small systems at home like the Atari and the NES by the late 80s. We saw the release of stuff like the EGA, which was just an updated version of CGA. But the biggest advancement of graphics technology that came out of the 80s was the Video Graphics Array, or VGA for short. Hey, I know, there's a lot of acronyms today, just bear with me. VGA was invented in 1987 when IBM launched the IBM 8514A, a graphics accelerator. It gave users an insane 256 colors and a resolution of 640 by 480. If you ever want to simulate what playing games of that resolution was like back then, just buy an RTX 3050 and play literally anything. Anyways, this VGA format became industry standard for years to come. Any TV, PC, or video game console that came out after this used a VGA connector. And it lasted all the way into the 2000s when it got replaced by the HDMI kit. While all of this was going down, a small company by the name of ATI was started in 1985. ATI is gonna become much more important later, but at this time, they mainly produced integrated graphics cards for companies like IBM and Commodore. Their first lineup of proprietary graphics cards were called the Wonder Series. These Wonder Series cards are remembered for offering multi-monitor capability, which seems crazy by today's standards, but in the late 80s, it was game-changing. By the end of the 80s and going into the 90s, 3D technology had become more relevant than ever. While 3D tech had been around for about two decades, it was not viable for the processing power were available to most people. Sure, 3D animation tech and CGI had been used in movies, but even then it was used sparingly due to how primitive it looked. As GPU technology progressed into the 90s, more and more companies produced actual video cards instead of integrating them into the CPU. This allowed for a lot more capability and it meant more games on home computers. As the 90s rolled around, 3D graphics became more achievable for consumers. You see, the 90s was when graphics cards as we know them now, really started being produced. We are used to 3D graphics cards, not strictly 2D like it had been up until this point. And ironically, the first PlayStation beat the PC world to affordable 3D gaming. But shortly after, a company by the name of 3DFX released their first Voodoo card. 3DFX is a big deal when it comes to graphics cards because the Voodoo cards were really the first 3D graphics cards. And they were 3D cards only. If you ended up buying a Voodoo card, 
you'd need to buy a 2D card just to run your PC for regular function. While the Voodoo is a milestone in technology, 3DFX introduced a cool little piece of tech with the Voodoo 2. The Voodoo 2 allowed for you to link multiple graphics cards using a technology called SLI. I'm gonna give you the short explanation because we did a video on this already, but SLI meant more cards equals more performance. While 3DFX was taking off, ATI was making their own 3D cards in the form of the range lineup. Also, a new contender had entered the graphics card business that would change graphics card technology and PC gaming forever. NVIDIA. NVIDIA may be one of the most recognizable, if not the most recognizable brand in tech today. But funnily enough, the company was first concepted at a Denny's in 1993. By 1999, they had launched the world's first graphics processing unit, the GeForce 256. The world's first? Really? This statement was half true. While graphics technology and even 3D technology had been around, it usually came in the form of things like the 3DFX Voodoo cards, which could only do 3D, but needed a 2D card as well. These systems also relied on the CPU of the computer a lot more than the GeForce 256 did. So when they say it's the first GPU, it's because it was the most independent piece of graphics technology up until that point. Plus, no one had coined the phrase GPU yet. So when NVIDIA could just say they created the first one. After the creation and the launch of the GeForce 256, the GPU industry exploded even more. Gaming as a whole became a much bigger industry, which meant that even new consoles popping up at the beginning of the 2000s needed GPUs. NVIDIA created the GPU for the first Xbox while simultaneously releasing their own GeForce series. ATI also launched the now legendary Radeon series of GPUs, or infamous, depending on your taste, I guess. The GPU industry up until this point had been run by three companies, 3DFX, ATI, and NVIDIA. Until NVIDIA murdered 3DFX. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. They bought them, which is the same thing in corporate America. In the year 2000, NVIDIA bought 3DFX for $70 million and proceeded to keep making GPUs. Even though 3DFX is never brought up nowadays, they have an important part in the history of graphics cards and the PC industry as a whole. Regardless, NVIDIA charged on as they were still in direct competition with ATI. If NVIDIA launched, say, the GeForce 3 with a sexy new pixel shader, then ATI would follow up with a new radio on card that did the same. Both companies would bring back SLI. ATI would just call it Crossfire. And it seemed like the GPU industry would only benefit from this competition. That was until ATI was also bought out. In 2006, AMD bought ATI for $5.6 billion. AMD was looking for a leg up in the tech industry above Intel, and they decided that the GPU industry was exactly that. Unfortunately, this led to a bit of a decline for Radeon graphics cards in the late 2000s, going into the 2010s. The biggest advancement in GPU technology during the 2000s came from NVIDIA with the introduction of CUDA cores. Compute Unified Device Architecture, or CUDA, is a very complex concept. The short version of explaining it is that CUDA cores are effectively a force multiplier for a GPU. It can calculate multiple equations simultaneously. So if you're playing a game and your graphics card needs to re-render or calculate every single frame, CUDA cores allow it to do so more effectively. Now my explanation isn't perfect, but for our purposes today, CUDA cores were a big jump in tech and pushed the GPU industry forward as a whole. By the time we got to the 2010s, Radeon, now owned by AMD, had fallen from grace. They had some serious issues with graphics drivers that left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. And it wouldn't be until pretty much now, in 2024, that people started considering them as an option. Which means that Nvidia has been responsible for any major jumps in GPU technology for the last 15 years. After the introduction of CUDA cores, Nvidia introduced ray tracing along with their RTX 20 series graphics cards. Ray tracing is a realistic lighting method that was previously limited to animated movies. But after the RTX series was introduced, ray tracing became the thing every gamer wanted to achieve. If your PC could run the most taxing game with ray tracing on, you were hot shit. Also, side note, this is where all the RTX on memes came from because they're just making fun of NVIDIA RTX ads. NVIDIA had also been working hard on AI capabilities previous to RTX, but this did not take the spotlight until their 30 series graphics cards. Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS, 
has been the center point of NVIDIA's last two GPU lineups. We were introduced to DLSS with the 30 series cards, and at launch, I'll be honest, it wasn't perfect. What DLSS does is downscale the resolution of your game and then use AI to upscale and generate more frames. The goal here is to give the GPU you buy more performance capability and give more gamers the ability to use ray tracing. Don't get me wrong, the tech is cool, but when we got DLSS 1.0 with the 30 series, it made games look a little worse at times. It was a mixture of certain games not being as optimized for DLSS and the technology just being a little primitive. Flash forward to today and DLSS is definitely a viable option. You know, I like to shit on it sometimes and say it makes games look bad but in all reality, if you use it properly, it's amazing. DLSS saw updates with the launch of the NVIDIA 40 series graphics cards in 2022. And it's now marketed as not just a performance booster, but a tool to be used for budget gaming. If your graphics card can't quite get the performance you want, sprinkle in a little DLSS and you should be good to go. AI is clearly the path moving forward for NVIDIA and the GPU industry as a whole. AI learning is a massive industry now. Both NVIDIA and AMD are pursuing it aggressively. NVIDIA revealed their new powerhouse AI chip this year named Blackwell. And the rumors are that both AMD and NVIDIA are set to release a new lineup of graphics cards later this year. And I'm sure they will come with their own set of advancements. Overall, NVIDIA is the industry leader in the GPU market, and it seems that graphics technology already has a breakthrough every day, whether that be with AI, and image generation or things like Unreal Engine showing how much more lifelike detail we can achieve in 3D animation. Graphics cards and 3D technology are such a young technology, so I'm sure there is so much more to come. All right, that's about all there is to tell on the history of graphics cards. This subject is a bit of a rabbit hole, but I wanted to give a timeline of how graphics cards came to be in less than an hour. Every PC gamer has a GPU of some kind, but the majority of us don't actually know the history behind it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We have some cool videos coming out. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. This video is about the history of graphics cards, so I, needless to say, I'm curious what graphics card are you using and are you excited for the refresh that's coming later this year. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.